The following presentation was recorded at the 2014 Southeast Linux Fest in Charlotte, North Carolina. It is licensed under a Creative Commons license. For more information, visit www.southeastlinuxfest.org. The Southeast Linux Fest would like to thank the following diamond sponsors in 2014 for helping make these videos possible. Old software sucked um, a lot. Current software sucks too. Um, my list of things that I dislike in the world of Linux keeps growing every day that I continue using Linux. And I think part of that is because I've been using it too long. Uh, you know, we make fun of old Unix people for hating things like GNU Bash and stuff like that. They're like, ah, it's not like Born Shell. It's what I started on and stuff. Well, you know, we get that way in the Linux community too. I hate GNOME 3. I hate SystemD. I hate C groups. I hate current KDE. I don't use any of this crap at all. Um, and yeah, you know, I mean, I just, but I know, I know its purpose. Uh, I know the user it's trying to target, but it's not me. So with that, we do have a lot of things that just work out of the box now. And for that, I'm very thankful. The Linux kernel has come a long way, and hardware has come a long way. We don't have to deal with finicky hardware anymore. Um, and I also think the popularity of Linux in general for getting major hardware companies to commit full-time people to maintaining kernel support. Without that, we wouldn't have things like wireless networking or sound that works without spending a week futzing around with the kernel. Uh, we used to kill so many hours working on that kind of stuff. And if I was doing this presentation back then, I would probably pick one thing to talk about and tell you how to write a config file or tell you how to recompile your, your kernel to get one thing working. That's what we did back then. So what am I talking about? You wanted a GUI? All right, that meant you're using X386. Not so bad, right? Well, you got to write your XF86 config file. OK, well, that doesn't seem so hard. I defined some font paths. Oh, well, you know, I can probably go with the template. Ah, and then you get to mode lines. <laughs> Who remembers mode lines? How many people fried a monitor with all that stuff? Yeah, all right, there we go. That was sort of the rite of passage. You destroy some hardware just to get a GUI. All right, and then, of course, you know, it's going to run in 16 color until you figure out what line you had to change in the screen section. Uh, in the virtual virtual, because we all had 640 by 480, or if we were lucky, 8 by 6. And X wanted to run as if it were on a screen this size, and so you had that virtual thing. It's like, who, who thought that was useful, right? And you had to go and set that to 0, 0 to make it usable. OK, you've got your mode lines written. You have X386 up and running. Now you need a window manager. Well, we don't have desktop environments. We, we have to pick a window manager. Which one do I use? I don't know anything about window managers. Which one are you using? FVWM? OK, I'll go with that. That sounds good. Can I have your config file? Thanks. All right, now I'm just going to adapt that and hope it works. Now all I have is Xterm. I spent all that time to get a graphical user interface only to get a command prompt in a window. Yes, it was fun. Well, let's browse the web. Oh, uh, no, wait, hold on, we got to configure dial-up. <laughs> Anyone ever use dial-up on Linux? Yeah, it's fun, right? Yeah, spent a lot of time. OK, let's get online. If you have Ethernet and you're at a university, awesome. Just plug it in and use ifconfig and, or DHCP, whichever client you prefer at that point in time. But most of us had dial-up at home. We didn't have broadband. We didn't have any of that kind of stuff. And PPP was a bitch to configure. Um, yeah, and it's, you know, I, I feel sorry for anyone who still has to work with this. Writing chat scripts by hand. Um, but, but, to ease the pain, Slackware did come with PPP setup, which was extremely useful. It was just a dialogue-based shell script, and it worked on other distributions. I copied it to a lot of systems and used it to configure PPP. And it was enough to get up and running so that you could then browse the web. Oh, yeah, wind modems. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, man. Well, at this point in time, you're just kind of screwed. Sorry. You, know, you can go buy a USR, you know. Yeah, so. OK, now let's browse the web. Links? Really? I got to use that? That sucks. Yeah. I want to I see what's on the web. Well, Netscape Navigator is your answer. So fire that up. Oh, wait, it doesn't come with Slackware because it's commercial software. So you got to go to ftp.netscape.com, dive down 9,000 directories, find the tarball, run the setup script, which is effectively pointless, which is just copy stuff somewhere. And then 
find the binary, run it, and the fonts look like crap. Also, why is it so slow? Why is it so slow? It was a motif, it was statically linked. None of us had commercial motifs, so they had to link the library in, but I'm glad they did, otherwise we wouldn't have had a browser. Who cares, some commercial company released software for Linux, and that was the big thing. You know, I have Netscape running on my Linux host. That was pretty cool. Well, that was terrible. Let's watch a movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not gonna happen. <laughs> Well, what did we use? We didn't have VLC, we didn't have mPlayer, and have Totem, the whole GStreamer stack, whatever the hell KDE has, we didn't have any of that. We used Xanim. Who used Xanim? Okay, compiled from source, after finding your object files that you needed. Okay, so this guy up in Massachusetts, he, he decided that he was gonna do this service for the open source community, this thankless job, and sign these NDAs with the companies holding the patents for the codecs. Then he would compile all of the codecs. He wrote his code so he can compile it all as individual object files, post the object files for you to download, and you pick the codecs you want. And he had them built for different architectures. So you had Intel, uh, you had Spark, Alpha, all this stuff. He did this just on his own time. You would download these, you had to edit your uh, uh, I make file, <laughs> then run xmkmf-a, then edit your make file because it was going to generate a bad make file, and then build it, and hopefully you got an XANM binary that would play a QuickTime movie that you downloaded two weeks ago, but then you found out that it was using the Sorensen codec and that was not available. And all you wanted to do was watch a trailer for a movie. Well, maybe I can look at a PDF. That actually worked! Adobe has always released Acrobat Reader, and you could always get it from ftp.adobe.com. That's actually really cool. Adobe sucks in a lot of ways, but they always made sure that this was available and you didn't have to dive through their damn website to get it. You just had to go to the FTP site. And surprisingly, it was not completely terrible. It actually did work, and the fonts didn't look like crap. <sighs> How do I play music? Can I do that at least? I can't watch a movie, web browsing's slow. I can play music, right? Well, you gotta recompile your kernel. Okay, so let's, let's get ready for that, buckle in. Okay, you gotta pick the right OSS options, um, and then you gotta build a sound.o file for your system. These don't come with the distribution because you can only pick one sound card driver. It's gonna output one sound.o file. Hope you get it right. Now you use mod probe to load that module. You should be good to go at this point. You should have dev DSP, dev audio, dev mixer, all that'll be working. Oh. Your system locked up? Why didn't you tell me you had an ISA sound card? Now we have to initialize ISA PNP hardware. Does anybody remember doing this? All right, gotta run PNP dump. Now you're gonna get Etsy, Etsy ISA PNP.conf, delete all the crap in there, take only the settings for your device, edit rc.local, make sure you run ISA PNP to init the device before running mod probe. Now, doing that, you should have sound. This list goes on and on forever. Old stuff sucked. And we have a lot in the world of Linux to be thankful for. Our, uh, our problems now, yes, we have a lot of things that we argue about and bicker about and you know things don't work and stuff, but at least all this stuff is kind of behind us, right? Like I was able to plug this laptop into the projector and it worked. If I was doing that in 1998, <laughs> yeah, that's not gonna work. I mean, I, I could try, 